Good morning, this is Trish from Networks Computer Solutions here again, and we're going to be looking at Google Doc. This is part two of our sessions with Google Office. Uh, last week we had a look at how you can access Google Docs from the drive. Now I've got my drive open here, so you can see all my files and folders and things. So we're going to look at how you can make a new document using the Google templates. So last week we looked at opening from the new and go down to where it says Google Docs and then if you go across you can either choose either blank document or from a template. If we just click on Google Docs here it will just open a blank document. So let's have a look at the blank document first and then we'll have a look at some formatting options that I wanted to go through today. So last week I looked at some basic basic formatting just your font and alignment but you can do so much more with Google Docs um, you've got under the normal text you've got a choice of headings and but you can also insert um, lists and tables so we'll have a look at some of those so there's a couple of other ways that you can actually create a new document too if I'll go back to the drive for a second if you right click on this blank area you also get a menu that pops up and you can choose to do a Google Docs this way as well, um, which is really handy if you just want to right click, if you're used to right clicking and doing things. Okay, so once you've got a document open, you can also access the template gallery using this blue um, icon up the top up here. If I click on that, it will open up the template gallery which will open up these ones that you've got that come with Google Docs. You can get an add-on from PandaDoc, which gives you some more templates. However, you can't create your own templates if you're using the free version of Google Docs. You can though make your own templates and they'll appear down here in the recent documents and then you can uh, create a copy based on those. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the basic documents that come with Google Drive. Uh, most of the time you're probably wanting like reports or a resume. Now there's a couple of resumes uh, options here. This one here from Spearmint. If I click on that one, I'll show you a look. As you can see, it's quite a basic one, but it's quite well laid out. Everything is in chronological order. Your name, um, your personal details, skills and experience and education. Um, that's quite a very, very basic one. It's not very pretty. I don't particularly like it. Let's have a look at their other option that they've got there. They've got one here called Pet Resume. I double click on that one. This one is also in the Spearmint theme. So you can put your name over here and you could put a picture of yourself um, and then change some of the details. So you could actually use this type of resume and then also use, if I go back to it, I've been linking the tab. You could make a mashup of this particular one using the skills and experience, copy and paste all that information and then put it down the right hand side. So once you've got your, your templates open you can easily change them and all sorts of things. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you, if I can go back to the templates. Uh, letters is another popular one that you might want to use, but I'm just going to go blank for now and show you some of the other options. Okay, so our blank document, as you see, we can just type, I'm just going to type in the word tables. And as you know, everything changes every time you make a change to your document. Google Docs automatically saves it in the drive. 
If you click over here where it says Untitled Document, it will actually add the first paragraph as the document title. Just press Enter and accept that. We're going to have a quick look at a table in Google Docs. So to add a table to your document, we'll come down another line, you click on the Insert tab, and then you can go Table, and then you can use this grid picker to actually pick out what size table you want. I'm going to do a 4x4 four four for a start. And then I'm just going to put in my headings of city, population, rainfall, and temperature. So um, then I'm down in here. I'm going to put in our cities of Horsham, Stall, and Ararat. So you can actually move around within the cells by either using the tab key or by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Okay, so I will put the data in and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put it put in the data that I want for this particular table. So what we'll do now is we will format the table to make it look a bit nicer. So I'm going to select this top row here and I'm going to change the background. Up here to the paint bucket, the background colour, I'm just going to select a very pale grey. And I'm also going to add bold and I might enlarge that text by one point. So from 11 point to 12 point. I also want to add a row above this. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select insert row above. Now what I want is I want all this to be one cell. So I'm going to select that row, right click again and go merge cells. I want this to be in the center and I'm going to put major cities in the winner. Now I might make this stand out a little bit more by having that background just slightly bit darker and I might increase that font once more. Okay so that's tables they are really easy to do. Um, you can also change the border of this if you wanted to. Uh, it's a little bit trickier than what it is in Word, so I might just insert another table and show you how that's done or how I've found how to do it. There may be a better way of doing it. Uh, I'll increase that over there, put a page number in there, and put this page two. I normally do this in my uh, footers. Let's put a C. As you can see, it automatically converts, if I just put a C inside the bracket, it automatically converts it to the copyright symbol. I'm going to line this to the right. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to have the top border and I want to get rid of those other borders around this. So I can just click on the border to select it. Click up, there we go. Click on the border to select it. And then up here there's a little pen tool It actually says border colour. You can click on that drop down arrow. And what I've found you can do, you can actually just turn the border to white. And that will make it look like it doesn't have a border. Just to pretty it up a little bit. I'll get rid of that bottom one. So that just looks a little bit neater. Oh, there might be go. So that looks a little bit more stylish, maybe. Another thing I didn't show you last time was the margins. Now you can set your page margins using your left and right arrows up the top in the ruler. But what's best is that you actually go into the page setup. So this will allow you to also change the rotation of the how the page is looking. At the moment we've got it in portrait mode. So if I go File and then Page Setup, down here I've got the option to change the paper size. Because I'm in Australia, I like to set that at A4. 
and we've got the option of portrait mode or landscape. Here, and we can also change the page colour if we want to change the colour of the page that we're working on. Once you've made your changes, you can actually save this as a default, so this is how all your blank pages will come up. And you can also change the margin. At the moment, it's set to a margin of one inch, which is fine for most documents i found. It just looks nice and neat. And the last thing I wanted to show you today, well, I know we're going to go a bit over our 10 minute limit, but anyway, we'll have a look at how you can insert a picture. So up here in the insert bar menu, we're going to go picture, and you can either upload from your computer, but I'm going to search the web. And because we're doing something on population, rainfall and temperature, I'm just going to do a search for rainfall. And once all these pictures turn up, Oh, what a nice, maybe that one's quite nice. So I can either single click the picture and then go insert, or I can double click the picture and it'll actually add the picture into the document. Well, that's it. That's Google Docs in 10 minutes, and we'll be back next week with another look. All right, bye for now.